Joining us right now is a statistical geneticist who also does statistical projections for the Hall of Fame ballot. Jason Sardell joins us from Oxford, UK. Jason, it's Brian Kenny. Thank you for joining us. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me, Brian. Jason, I want to jump right into it again. Uh, people who follow you online know that you're very good at this. What do you see happening? Maybe you could explain uh, the difference between the percentages that we see halfway through and exactly what you do to make your projections. Yeah, so the, one of the key things to know about the tracker is that the voters who reveal early are not the same as the voters who reveal after the results come in, or the ones that stay private altogether. And this is a realization I had early on in the 2000s, the 2010s, the hard way, when I would get excited that people like Mike Piazza and Jeff Bagwell were up in the 80s early on, and then they would slowly drop as the season went on. And then by the time the results came in, they would, they would miss well below 75%. And I realized there has to be a better way. So the, the, the key assumption in my model is that uh, the one of the main differences between the, the late revealing voters is that they, they tend to be more old school in their approach. They value things like MVP awards, mm -hmm. Cy Young awards, batting average, all-star appearances, uh, round numbers like 500 homers. Whereas the ones who reveal early are more stats-friendly voters. They they use war and, and Jay Jeffy's jaws to, to decide on who they're going to vote for. And it's not to say that all of the voters are in, are in one category or the other, but but it's disproportionately different between the, the early and the late revealing voters. So my model t attempts to unskew those voters um, and, and try to t take the ones who are representative in the, the initial uh, results that are in the tracker and project those onto the, the remaining ballots that we know are coming. What, what, now, you know, just to, for some background, you do know, like, who normally votes for who, right? Like, you've tracked what these voters yes. have done in the past. Exactly. Okay. Um, that's, um, that's exactly what we do. Right, yeah. So, okay. So, um, with that in mind, let's take a look at what your board is saying, and give me your biggest takeaway from the the differences that you see from what the tracker is saying and from what you're predicting. Yeah. So these are actually uh, I've, I've updated some of some of the key ones that people are most interested interested in: Maurer, Helton, and Wagner, of course, because they're right on the bubble. Um, when I put these up, uh, Joe Maurer continues to do really well. Uh, he, he's projecting to drop just a little bit in my model. I, I hear he, he's above 80%, 81% in, uh, in the more recent projections, but I would be, wouldn't be super surprised if he's in the high 70%, but he has enough of a buffer where he should stay uh, on course for election. He's doing really well with those small hall voters, getting um, about 71% of them, um, which is, which is incredible. I mean, it puts him almost on pace for election just with the, the stingiest voters alone. Um, whereas Todd Helton's a bit different. He's been notoriously hard to, pro to project throughout this season. Um, there's most of the voters, the what I call medium and large hall voters who, who were going to vote for him already voted for him last year. But as the, in the recent ballots, uh, a few uh, new results came in yesterday and this morning. And yesterday, the, the ones I, you just put up there, I had him at 71% chance. And now I'm projecting him at about a 90% chance of getting in. He only needs a handful more votes to flip in the remaining voters. He's looking really good. Um, stranger things have happened, but if I, I, I would put my money on him to get in uh, when the results are revealed. Uh, and Billy Wagner, he's... He's tricky. Uh, he needed more vote. He needed to flip more votes coming into this year than Todd Helton. And if you just do the straightforward projection of what we have in the, the tracker right now, he's going to miss uh, currently by about he'll get right around 74 percent on average, which would be which would be heartbreaking, I think, for him. But uh, I give him now a, about a one in four chance of getting elected, which isn't nothing. I mean, that's that's still a, a pretty good chance. It's a, it's about the same as the, his OBP against, and you wouldn't uh, be super surprised if someone got a hit against Billy Wagner, but you would you would put your money on, on that person to strike out or at least get an out. Right. <laughs> All right, Jason, great insight on this. Again, so with Jason, Jason has Beltre, Maurer, uh, Helton possibly, uh, Billy Wagner may be falling short. Billy Wagner has another year on the ballot, so that would be a little less heartbreaking, at least with uh, one more shot at it. Jason, excellent stuff. Thank you so much for joining us today, and, and thank you for your, your interest across the pond in baseball. Terrific stuff. Thank you. Yep.
Thanks, Brian.